In this video, we'll go over how to create a simple AR user interface using SwiftUI stacks and buttons. In particular, we'll be working on the control view of our AR furniture app. The control view consists of a control button bar with a browse button, a settings button, and a most recently placed button, and a control visibility toggle button. This button allows us to toggle the visibility of our control button bar. This video will focus on the implementation of the control button bar. Before we get started, this is the hardware and software used in this video. If you are using anything older or newer, you might have to make some adjustments to your code. Now let's get started. Select contentview.swift in the project navigator and press the resume button in the canvas. This will enable automatic preview updating as we update our Swift UI code. Set the zoom level of our preview to 75% to get a better view of our simulated device. Let's temporarily remove our AR view container. We'll re-add it shortly. We're going to add a Z-Stack and set its alignment to bottom. We're also going to add a modifier to our Z-Stack to make it span the full screen. In this case, we'll add edges ignoring safe area dot all to tell SwiftUI to ignore the safe areas for all sides of the display. We can now add our AR view container to our Z-Stack. Press resume in the canvas to make sure everything is still working as expected. Next, we'll work on our control view. Before we write any code, Let's think about how we can build such an interface with SwiftUI. It seems that the user interface is laid out vertically. On top, we have our control visibility toggle button, then some vertical space, and then our control button bar. We essentially have three vertically stacked elements. We can easily implement such a layout using a SwiftUI vStack. Let's see what this looks like in code. Create a new Swift file by right-clicking on contentview.swift and selecting New File. Select iOS as the platform and Swift file as a template. Press Next. We're going to name this file Control View. Press Create. Remove the import foundation statement and import SwiftUI. We're going to create a new struct called Control View and we'll have it adopt the view protocol. We'll conform to the view protocol by adding a body variable. Let's use autocomplete to help us along. Inside our body variable, we're going to add a V stack. Like I mentioned previously, inside our vStack, we'll add our control visibility toggle button, a spacer, and a control button bar. This code will of course give us errors because we haven't actually defined control visibility toggle button and control button bar. Let's create empty views with an H stack for both of these to get rid of the errors. There we go. Build and resume to make sure everything is still working as expected. Next, we'll work on our control button bar. Before writing code, let's again think about our layout. We have three buttons laid out horizontally. This looks like a great use for an H stack. However, by default, the buttons will be center aligned right next to each other. To get the desired effect of one button in the center, one button pushed to the left, and one button pushed to the right, we can again use spacers. Let's dive into the code to see how this works. Before we add buttons to our control button bar, Let's style the H stack by using SwiftUI modifiers. First, we're going to set the max width of our frame to 500 pixels. Second, we're going to add padding on all sides. Let's do 30 pixels. And finally, we'll add a background color. Let's set it to black with an opacity of 0.25 or 25%. Select Content View Swift in the Project Navigator and add the control view right below our AR view container. Build and press resume in the canvas. We now see a grayish bar on the bottom of our display. Let's get back to our control view. Inside of our H stack in our control button bar, let's create a button. For now, our button action will be a print statement. We'll have it print, browse button pressed. Next, we'll have our button display an image. In this case, we'll use the square.grid.2by2 image from Apple's SF symbols. So we'll write image, system name, square.grid, Dot two by two. Of course, we can style our button image using Swift UI modifiers. First, we'll set the font size to 35. Second, we'll set the foreground color to white. This is essentially the color of our image symbol. And third, we'll set the button style to plain button style. Finally, we'll also give our button a frame of 50 by 50 pixels. Build and press resume in the canvas. We can now see our control button bar with a white button in the center. Let's create the two remaining buttons by copy-pasting our Browse button. 
the left button will be our most recently placed button. Update the print statement and set the button image to clock.fill. The right button will be our settings button. Update the print statement and set the button image to slider.horizontal.3. Build and press resume in the canvas. We now see the control button bar with our three buttons. However, the buttons are squished in the center. Let's give them some space. Add a spacer between the most recently placed button and the browse button. Add another space between the browse button and the settings button. Build and press resume in the canvas. We can again see our control button bar, but now the buttons are properly spaced. By copy pasting code to create our three buttons, I've actually broken an important rule in programming. Whenever possible, we should strive to make our code modular and reusable. We essentially don't want to repeat code like I did for our buttons. To fix this, let's create a custom button. We're going to create a new struct and call it control button. We'll have it adopt the view protocol and give it a body variable. Let's copy our button code into the body of our control button. Instead of hard coding our action and button image, we'll make them reusable and create two constants for them. The first constant will be named system icon name and will be a string. The second constant will be named action and will be a closure. We don't have to create a constructor for a control button because Swift will automatically create one for a struct. We can now replace each occurrence of button with our custom control button. We'll pass in a system icon name and an action. For our button action, this can be one or multiple statements. Instead of previewing our app in the canvas, let's now run it on a physical device. When I tap on the Browse button, I see Browse button pressed in the console. We see a similar result for tapping on the Most Recently Placed button and the Settings button. Before we wrap up this video, let's quickly go over the purpose of each of these buttons. Tapping on the Browse button will open a Browse view displaying our 3D assets. Tapping on the Settings button will open a Settings view. And finally, tapping on the Most Recently Placed button We'll provide a shortcut to select the last used 3D model for placement in our scene. This allows the user to quickly place multiple instances of the same model without having to go into the browse view each time. The functionality for each of these buttons will be implemented in upcoming videos. And that's it for this video. 